Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we learnt about the concept of indexing in the 8085 microprocessor. In this session and in the subsequent session, from the registers of 8085 microprocessor, we are going to learn about the status or flags register. Today, we are in the part 1 of this series. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first, we will try to understand the need for the flags register. And thereafter, we will be introduced to the various components of the flags register. Now, do remember, in this session, we are going to be introduced to the components of the flags register. The detailed discussions involving all the components that will be taken care of in the next session. So, let's now focus on the need for the flags register. Now, we are going to understand the need for the flags register with the help of an example. And for this, we are going to perform an addition using the general purpose registers or GPRs and the accumulator. So we are going to need the programmer's view of 8085. By the way, let me tell you, this particular programmer's view of 8085 is yet to be completed. We will keep on adding all the different registers which are accessible as well as available for the programmers so that they can build efficient programs for 8085 microprocessor. So, let's get back to our illustration. Now, we are about to perform the addition of two 8-bit binary numbers, or in other words, two two-digit hexadecimal numbers. And for that, we are going to use the accumulator and one of the general purpose registers. Now, in order to store the values, we could have used the general purpose registers only, but you already know, in that case, we will have to go through a lot of hassles in order to move the data back and forth from one of the general purpose registers to the accumulator. Therefore, we are going to keep one of the operands within the accumulator, and the other operand will be kept in one of the general purpose registers. So let's assume within the accumulator, we have got the value F3. Now this is a two-digit hexadecimal number, or in other words, 8-bit binary number. And this is one of our operands. Now for the other operand, we are going to choose the general purpose register B. And say within B, we have kept the data 45. This is another two-digit hexadecimal number, or we can also say an 8-bit binary number. Now we are going to perform the addition, right? And for that, we will execute the instruction add B. So this instruction particularly will tell us to add the contents of the accumulator with the content stored inside the B register and thereafter store the result back in the accumulator. So we are going to perform the addition between F3H, that's our argent, and the addend. 45H. Let's begin the addition. 3 plus 5 will give us the value 8. Now, what about F plus 4? Think about it. If we talk about it in decimal, F is 15 and we have got 4 to add with it. So, 15 plus 4 will give us 19. So, in this case, we are going to convert the 19 of decimal into hexadecimal. Now, F is 15. Therefore, 16 of decimal is 10 in hexadecimal. So 17 is going to be 11, 18 is going to be 12, and 19 is going to be 13. So we are going to have 3 as sum and 1 as carry. Now we could also have done it in a different way. If you remember, this is the largest hexadecimal digit. Now if we add any symbol of hexadecimal with it, in the least significant digits place, we are going to get one less than the addend and we will have a carry, right? Anyway, coming back to our example, we have got the result 138 of hexadecimal. Now think about it. Two hexadecimal digits can also be framed as 8-bit binary. Now what about the size of the accumulator? It is of 8 bits, right? However, the result that we have got is a three-digit hexadecimal value. So from these three digits, the accumulator will only be able to facilitate the least significant two digits. So what about this one? 
Because after the execution of this particular instruction, within the accumulator, we will have the value 38H. That is, an 8-bit value. But that's not correct, right? We also had received the carry. In this situation, a new register will come at rescue. And that's the flag register, which in the programmer's view of 8085 is named as F. Now how it is going to save us from this crisis? If you notice carefully, when we are adding two two-digit hexadecimal numbers, as a result, at max, we can have a three-digit hexadecimal number, right? And if you remember, we already know when we are adding two one-digit hexadecimal numbers, at max, the carry can always be one. And the same formula can also be applied when we are adding these two most significant digits. Isn't it? So, from the 8-bit flags register, if we only set one bit indicating that the carry has occurred, then our problem will be solved. So this is one of the reasons why we need the flags register. Apart from this, the flags register is also helpful when it comes to arithmetic operations, logical operations, conditional branchings, and so much more. So, that was all about the need for flags register. Let's now get introduced to the various components of the flags register. Now, in the programmer's view of 8085, we just have introduced the flag register and I told you it is also of 8 bits. So, let's figure out all the different parts of this flag register. Now, the information that we have so far is the flag register is of 8 bits and we are going to number the flag register bits from 0 to 7 where 7 is the position of the most significant bit and 0 is the position of the least significant bit. Now, the least significant bit of the flag register is responsible for CY, that is, carry. So, if this bit is set, we will know from the operation which just has been performed, a carry has occurred. Thereafter, the bit position number 2 is actually occupied for the bit P or parity. Then the bit position number 4 is for AC or auxiliary carry. Bit position number 6 is dedicated for Z or 0. And bit position number 7 is dedicated for S or sine. Now what about the bit positions 5, 3 and 1? Well, these are don't cares. That is, the processor doesn't really care whatever bit has been set in these positions. Now, the details regarding all of these components, we are going to learn about that in the next session. In this session, let me show you how the flag register is used by providing you an example. We have just seen the addition, so I am going to use that example itself. So, what did we do? In order to perform the addition, Within the accumulator, we had the value F3 and within the general purpose register B, we had the value 45. So these two are our operands. Now when we performed the addition, we got the result that is a three-digit hexadecimal number. Now by the end of this addition, within the accumulator, we are going to have only two digits because since the accumulator is of eight bits, so it will be able to only facilitate two hexadecimal digits. And since we have acquired a carry, therefore, the carry flag will be set to one. Or in other words, the flag will be raised. So from this example, I believe you got the idea that whenever the other flags will be affected by any sort of operation whatsoever, the respective flag will be raised or these bit places will be set to 1. Now the details regarding these, we are going to learn about that in the next session. So in this session, we cover the topics, the need for the flags register and thereafter we were introduced to the components of the flags register. Alright people, that will be all for this session. 
In the next session, we are going to learn about the components of the flags register in details. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.